Hello and welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be doing a day of eating high calorie, low volume foods. For those of you who aren't a regular on the channel, you will not know that I haven't always been the Greek Adonis that is in front of you. That's a joke, I don't want anyone to get triggered, I know this is the internet, but I was actually a skinny little weasel, so I know the perils it is trying to gain weight. So I wanna show you tips and tricks and all the foods that I use to help me gain 30 pounds of muscle. This is gonna be some nutritious, healthy meals, just because we're bulking doesn't mean we have to eat junk food all day. I'm also gonna do a workout and explain my new training routine, which I'm really excited about. It's gonna be a fun video. Anyway, it's the morning. I think you know what time it is. I'll see you guys at Breakfast time. So we're gonna be starting the day off with my homemade mass gain smoothie. A lot of people I speak to trying to gain weight and I think I've done it in the past, buy those mass gainer shakes and they're just full of processed garbage and they're expensive. It's a lot cheaper, quicker and convenient to just make your own. I also follow a plant-based diet so I think it's imperative to make sure you get all your vitamins and minerals and having a smoothie in the morning makes that so simple. But I'm just gonna kind of show you the basic ingredients that you can use and you kind of adjust it to your taste and needs. So the first ingredient is gonna be oats. We're gonna make oat milk, kind of oat milk. So we're gonna put the oats in and then blend them so they're really like oat flour and then add some water. It's gonna kind of give the oaty texture as well as get you some delicious oats in the shape. Scales here, pop them on. Okay, so that's 75 grams of oats. Then I'm just gonna blend it so it's like oat flour. Then we add some water. I just fill up a shaker and just kind of sporadically add it to the smoothie as I go, as you'll see. Okay, so now we have our oat milk. It's time to add the other ingredients. So next we're gonna add 200 grams of frozen bananas. I prefer to them frozen as I think it gives the smoothie kind of a nice thicker milkshake kind of texture, but you can just use regular bananas if you prefer. You can also obviously use other types of fruit. I just really enjoy bananas and they're actually quite high calorie. A lot of other fruits like blueberries and raspberries are pretty low calorie, which you can obviously put them in for the nutrition, but if you're looking to gain weight, they're not gonna be as beneficial. Next, I'm gonna add dates. Dates are super nutritious, high in fiber, and also very high in calories and low volume in food. So they're great for like using for sweeteners and stuff like that. You actually don't need to use much to get the most out of them, but as we're making a mass gainer shake, I'm gonna use 50 grams. For those of you interested, we use pitted dates. They're just a lot easier for putting into smoothies and stuff like that, but you can obviously just use regular dates as well. Next, obviously, we've got our protein. Next, I'm gonna put in my creatine. If you do weight training, it's pretty much the only supplement that has been proven to scientifically have benefit. It's super cheap. You just wanna make sure you've got creatine monohydrate, and you're just gonna need five grams a day to get the optimal effect. Next, you're gonna have almond butter. We don't actually have this that often. You can just use peanut butter or any kind of nut butter. It's just a healthy fat. We have some left in the cupboard that I'm gonna use up. Yeah, I'm just gonna use one tablespoon. Mm. Next, I'm gonna have some more healthy fats. I'm gonna have 30 grams of chia and flax seeds. I buy them both separately, blend them up and put them together. So we've got our slow releasing carbs with the oatmeal, our fast releasing carbs with the bananas, our healthy fats with the almond butter, the chia and flax seeds, as well as the protein from the protein powder. I then just gonna add some ingredients as well for daily supplementation. So this is turmeric and black pepper mixed. I add this because turmeric has been proven to be a great anti-inflammatory and having it with the black pepper increases the absorption rate by like 10,000 or something like that. So it's something to put in. You don't need to put much and you can't even taste it in the smoothie. Then add some cinnamon, as it is a great antioxidant. And the past week or so, I've also been adding in cat's claw. This is also supposed to be some kind of anti-inflammatory. Uh, Loretta bought it ages ago and it's been sat in the cupboard, so I've started putting in my smoothie as well. I haven't really noticed any difference, but you can't taste it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on doing it and seeing if I do feel anything from it. I also then take my B12, Omega Freeze, and vitamin D as well as Brazil nuts for selenium. I would generally add ice to this, but seeing as we're trying to do a high calorie, low volume day, I'm not gonna add any ice because ice kind of thickens it up and makes the drink a bit bigger. So we don't wanna do that today. So we're just gonna add the rest of the water from the shaker. So it makes about full shaker and a little bit. So I'll drink this now. Oh, it's so delicious. And I think this is roughly around a thousand calories. Right, I'm gonna enjoy this, get some work done, and check back in after. So that is the 
the smoothie done. I put it on time lapse because I know some of you perverts like to make sure that we actually eat the food in these videos. That was so easy to drink. Like I normally have like a 500, 600 calorie smoothie at the moment, but those 400 extra calories literally made no difference, especially not having ice in it. So easy to drink. So it's like the easiest thousand calories in the world. So I think I'll probably do a workout before I eat again. So the next time you see me, I will be pumping some iron. What's up guys, back with another commentary. Um, I say another, this is the second time doing this. Let me know if you find these commentaries useful and I'll keep on doing them. And if you find them annoying, then I'll stop doing them. This is gonna be my first training session since two months ago when I got tennis elbow. I pretty much talk about it <laughs> every single video quite a lot. So yeah, I've been taking it easy, but this is an upper body push session, shoulder focus. Start my session with handstand push-ups. It's actually been so long since I've done this, I actually found it awkward to kick up and it shows how quickly you can kind of lose function functionality and movement. I managed to get 10 the first time, which I was pretty stoked about. And then I just did two more sets. So then I go on to the main movement, which is shoulder press. Starting off super, super lightweight. As I say, I haven't trained for two months. There's no point jumping back in with super high weights, low reps, because it's just asking for trouble. So I eased my way in. So I started off super cautious with some 12 kilograms. And then I just slowly edged my way up and I finished the set on 17 kilograms, which is still super light for me, but it feels good. And I'm doing super high reps. So I was doing like reps of 15. And then I went on to lat raises. Lat raises again use super low weight, five kgs for the warm-up set and then seven kgs. Lat raises felt good, they didn't really aggravate my elbow at all. A little pointer if you do do lat raises, keep the weight super low. Like lat raises incorporate in small muscles so you don't really need to lift heavy weight. You're much better off focusing on getting that muscle mind connection. Next I got to bench which is probably my favorite exercise as the same with everyone. Once again super low the weight. Since I'm using such low weights I actually really did focus on using correct form and really squeezing and creating that mind muscle connection found a good pointer to kind of use your elbows to do the bench press so don't focus so much on just pushing the weight up and down focus on really pulling your elbows back and then almost like lifting with your elbows and trying to push them together and then squeezing at your chest and I felt like my chest was on fire as it should be as it hasn't been trained for so long now final exercise I did was banded flies bands have been something I've been using quite a lot lately using them with the dumbbells definitely helps and this exercise has been a game changer for me so they're a bit awkward to set up as you can probably see but you just kind of want to grip the dumbbells with the band underneath the bench and then perform the banded flies. I used, once again, drop the weight really light and really focus on that form. And the band enables you to keep tension on the pectoral muscle throughout the whole range of motion where is if you don't use the band, you kind of lose it as your arms get further and further apart. And it really kind of resembles a cable fly machine and is one of my new favorite exercises. And I really love this. I probably will start doing some kind of tricep isolation after this, but I think throwing tricep isolations when you've had tennis elbow is not a good idea in my opinion so I kind of called it a day there I was happy that I managed to get those exercises down pain-free and yeah I was pretty happy with my strength was considering as I said I haven't trained for two months then I thought I'd do a quick physique check this is quite sorry state of affairs I actually took my measurements the other day and I've actually lost an inch and a half of my bicep and my chest and I've gained an inch on my waist and I've also lost four pounds since I got injured this is the starting point so I'll be starting the bulk again from here I guess I'm gonna have to do some kind of body recomposition which I'll talk about in another video because that's almost a separate video in itself that's going to be it for the training today and i'm guessing it is lunchtime i'm back in the kitchen and keeping with the theme today i want to keep everything super quick and easy because most clients i speak to don't have time to eat food that's kind of why they say they can't eat enough so this is going to be another staple i have when i'm trying to bowl peanut butter bagels i am aware i used almond butter earlier i did plan on having avocado and cheese bagels but as usual, the avocado is not ready, so unfortunately, we're gonna have peanut butter. But yeah, you could do this with some avocado and cheese. Okay, so we're two bagels. Oh, you have to cut them yourself? What is this? I don't know what it is, but bagels for some reason are so much easier to eat than bread and they have more calories. So yeah, definitely good to go for bagels over bread. I am aware I have already used bananas as well but the bananas earlier were frozen and this is a fresh banana so but as i said i was planning on having avocado and cheese this is just another makeshift meal alternatives to having peanut butter and banana you could have baked beans baked beans are actually really healthy and nutritious and quite high calories so you have two bagels with a whole tin of baked beans would be roughly about the same as well you can also have like peanut butter and maple syrup is really nice there are so many combinations you can have okay bagels are ready 
Tip if you want to measure out your peanut butter, you just put it on the scales and you take it from the scale and it will tell you how much has been taken out. I find that a lot easier than trying to measure it out each time. Okay, wow, that's already 30 grams of peanut butter, which is 200 cows. But seeing as we're trying to keep the volume super low, I'm gonna peanut butter the other sides as well. Mm. Yeah, if you do enjoy peanut butter, I really suggest making sure you weigh it out each time because it's so easy to just use so much of it. Like those two bagels now are 900 calories. Alternatively, you can also get peanut butter powder, PB2. PB2 basically doesn't have any of the fat in it, so it has a lot less calories. And if I'm dieting, that is something I usually get, but we're on the bulk train at the moment. So real stuff for us. If you really wanted to bump up the calories even more on this, you can use maple syrup. We literally don't have maple syrup because it's so high in calories. So we have like this sugar-free sweetener, which is only 13 calories a tablespoon. So not really what you want if you're trying to get loads of calories in, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Yeah, if you use maple syrup, like the amount I use of this would probably be another 200 calories. And there you have it. That is just over a thousand calories in two bagels and that once again took me like five minutes. I didn't realize how much peanut butter I was gonna use. I actually was gonna have some nuts to bump my calories up. This is monkey nuts and that's 30 grams and that is 200 calories. So I learned this when I did the strongman day of eating. Nuts are absolutely incredible if you wanna bump up your calories. Literally just a handful will give you 200 calories. But seeing as the meal's already a thousand calories, I might save these for a bit later. So yeah, I'm gonna sit down and enjoy this. Oof, I know the lighting is probably terrible in here, but I'm just gonna sit down and wolf these puppies down. Let's give them a try. Ah, oh, that is so good. So that is done. So that was so easy. That was like a thousand calories in less than five minutes. A little bit sickly. I obviously didn't plan on using 60 grams of peanut butter, but I got a little carried away. Next time I see you, it will be dinner time. So I'm pretty excited for the next meal. I think the next meal is probably going to be the best one of the day. So I'll see you guys there. All right, so we are back in the kitchen for dinner time. And once again, it's gonna be another roughly 1,000 calorie meal that's gonna take about five minutes to cook. So we are having ourselves some tortilla wraps. We've got some falafel, some hummus, some salad. Now I'm guessing you guys know how this is gonna go, but yeah, we're literally just gonna make some wraps and then I'm gonna bang them in the oven and they'll be good to go. So each of these wraps are 200 calories a piece. So once again, all these things, these like, this is high fat, falafel is high fat, um, they are healthy, but you just, once again, if anything's high fat, you really have to be careful how much you're having as this day will show you. It says to microwave the falafel for like 60 seconds, so I'm gonna quickly do that before I put it in the wrap and then I'm gonna chuck them in the oven anyway. Now I'm gonna add the essentials, sriracha, and of course, nutritional yeast. Now just the, uh, the hard part of trying to wrap these bad boys. Okay, so that's dinner done. As you can see, that once again took about five minutes. This comes to a total of 1,000 calories or maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I'm actually really hungry. As you can say, I've had quite a lot of calories already today. It's only 4 p.m. and I'm still super hungry. So I'm gonna chuck this in the oven and I'm gonna eat these falafels while they cook. Cheers. Okay, so the wraps are in the oven, so I'll check back in when they're ready. And dinner is served. So we've got the two wraps. I actually lately decimated them. <laughs> they were cooking with Loretta's food. And yes, this is my koala costume. It is pretty much winter again in the UK. That is so good. I can tell I'm gonna be starving afterwards because I'm already so hungry. And these are so small, so we're gonna have to have a big pudding to finish off. I'm gonna enjoy these, uh, watch a show. I'm too embarrassed to tell you what it is because if you knew what we were watching, I would have to delete my channel and move abroad.
Okay, so we are back in the kitchen for one final meal. We obviously can't finish the day without pudding, so I'll be finishing. If you know me, you know me well. I love some cereals, so we are gonna have a combination of the three greatest cereals in the world, choco rice, coconut peanut balls, which are pretty much oldie versions of Reese's Pieces, and we're gonna top it with granola, and granola's gonna be the last high calorie, low volume food you can have, because 50 grams of it is 225 calories, and 50 grams is not a lot, so I'm gonna pour that on top of the cereal just to make the cereal as calorific as possible. Okay, so these are the balls. So that's 100 grams, so that's 400 calories, and they are so good. It just tastes like balls of peanut butter. Some Cocoa Pops, these aren't really high calorie, but I just love them, so. 500 cows, see how much granola we can fit in the bowl. I had to get 50 cows, so that's 700 cows in a bowl. Okay, and just for the, as many calories as possible to finish the day off, got chocolate milk. So this is 60 calories for 100. So we'll see how much we can fit in. So we're on 700. Okay, <laughs> 300 mils of milk. So that's almost 200 calories of chocolate milk. So that's like 900 calories. I'm quite impressed with that. Got 900 calorie bowl of cereal. Once again, sticking to the theme of taking like five minutes to make. It's gonna be difficult to eat though. Oh, it's so chocolatey. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna eat this and then we'll talk about how the day has been afterwards. So yeah, see you guys in a bit. So that is pudding done, that was really nice. Yeah, the chocolate milk was probably a bit of a bad choice, a bit sickly in the end, but yeah, that was so easy to eat. I could definitely eat more. I hope this video has been educational. If you're trying to gain weight, you're someone who struggles to eat a lot of food, then making choices like I made today, is so easy to get your calories super high. And then if you're looking to lose weight, pretty much do the opposite of what I did in this video. I've actually made a video where I did high volume, low calorie food, where I ate 1700 calories and I was way more full that day than I am today. So it really goes to show making good choices makes dieting easier or gaining weight easier. So yeah, I hope you find this video useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. I guess how many calories are in this bowl? 900. Oh, could you hear me? <laughs> no. <laughs> A very specific guess. You know how good I guess it is. You didn't even look. I thought I didn't look. <laughs>